So their spleens are about 50% larger on average. Uh, and this was true for divers and non-divers. So that showed us that it was very likely to be something genetic rather than, you know, the fact that you're diving increases the size of your spleen. But does diving increase the size of the spleen? This is a question that I think is still open because in both of the populations where I've measured this, divers and non-divers have the same size spleen. However, other people have shown that, um, you know, when you train, if you train people, if you recruit people to a study and train them in breath hold diving, their spleens increase in size. Um, so I don't know if it's just that the populations that I've worked with have some kind of genetic factors that override that change. Um, but yeah, open question, I would say. I know you've done some work parsing which genes are different in this population and developing some animal models for that, and that some of this converges on thyroid hormone. Um, could you tell us the relationship between thyroid hormone levels that people are fascinated by thyroid hormone, it seems? Everyone either thinks they have a thyroid deficiency or an overproduction of thyroid or they want to increase their thyroid. What is the relationship between thyroid hormone and spleen function as it relates to the production of these additional red blood cells? The gene that we found that was evolving in the population um, correlates with higher than average thyroid hormone levels. Um, so not, you know, like clinically hyperthyroid, but higher than average. And this is actually also true for Europeans who are carrying the same genetic variant. Um, you know, we showed in another group of individuals that if you have this gene variant, um, you have higher thyroid hormone levels and you have a larger spleen. Um, so it's not just something that's true in the C-nomads. 